Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is an interesting trick-taking hidden team-based game and it's called Weak Defeat Strong. It's by SA Games. It's for four to eight players. It takes about a half an hour to 45 minutes to play and it is for ages probably 13 and up. In the game Weak Defeat Strong, you're simply going to be playing on a hidden team, unless of course you're Felix, the main uh, leader of the bad guys team. And you're going to be going around in turns playing down tricks, whether it's pairs, triples, quadruples, so on and so forth. Other players will try and match that or beat your hand with better different combinations of cards. The person who gets the highest combination of cards is going to be the winner. They're going to get a, a location as well as a reward, and then they're going to be able to draw cards from the decks that it tells you to draw from and gather those for the next round. There's 13 rounds, and after that everybody's going to tally up their, their locations. There's some bonus things that, that can happen at the end of the game, and the, the team that has the most locations of uh, provided there's no other variants, is going to win the game. Pretty simple style trick-taking game with quite a few different little uh, interesting adaptations to uh, trick-taking game, of course. Let's go down below and I'll show you everything that comes into the game. So here we have the game Wheat Defeat Strong by SA Games and everything included, of course. As you see down below, there are two different factions and uh, with the factions come four different characters. The main interesting, uh, uniquest one, I guess, is going to be the cyborg leader. He's going to start off revealed in the game and he's always going to be there regardless of how many players are in the game and this guy is going to get his own unique deck of nine cards that he starts off with including the amount of cards you would get when you start the game depending on the number of players because depending on the number of players how many cards you start off with your hand each other player is going to have a special special ability like last shot wild shot uh the baiter override and of course they're all going to be the same here except for this one here which is three select one you can use these abilities throughout the game and bluff to basically be able to play the abilities down uh these over here called location cards and these are what you're going to be trying to gather it's all manhattan but there's different portions of Manhattan, whether it be Inwood or the Harlem or the West Side. And as you gather locations, these are what you're going to need to win the game. Underneath these guys are rewards. When you gather a location, you get a reward, and a lot of the time it's going to let you draw an effect card. Sometimes it'll allow you to draw cards from the fire deck, and other times it may allow you to see an opponent's or uh, ally's hidden identity card, because these are all going to be hidden except for Felix's. Over here you have the effect card deck, the fire deck, and then any additional locations that you're going to be getting at the end of the game to use as bonus rewards, and of course a rewards deck on the side. You'll also be getting a rule book along with the box for the game De Weak Defeat Strong, all right, let's come up and I'll explain the turn really quick and then we'll come down and I'll show you how it works. So to begin the game, you're going to set aside 13 locations along with one reward underneath each one of them. That way, whenever somebody gathers a location as a reward for taking a trick, uh, then you're also going to get that reward underneath it as well. Every player is also going to get a hidden identity depending on the number of players in the game. The only thing for certain is that Felix will be in play. He'll be shuffled along with the rest of the cards that are going to be added to players. So there's eight different characters. Maybe it's going to be a five player game. You're going to shuffle in four hidden hit four random ones with Felix of course and then deal them out Felix is going to reveal himself or herself and then they're going to go ahead and get gather those cards that Felix starts off with he gets a couple of bonus cards in the game after that uh, depending on the number of players how many cards of uh, fire cards you're going to draw generally I think it's like 32 cards and then of course there's variants where the leader can choose how many cards you start with but for the most part the lesser number of players means more cards in hand you're going to then organize your hand from lowest to greatest making sure you see those alpha and beta cards so that they're attached to each other, all the 20s and 21s, and of course on the side, if you have effect cards, you're going to put those aside as well, so that way you can utilize them for tricks. Then Felix will start the round off by playing any number of cards of the same type, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, all the way up to 13, along with 20s and 21s. You can play pairs, quads, triples, 5, 6, so on and so forth, and then people are going to match that trick. So if I played 3 threes, the next player could play 3 fours or 3 fives, anything that's higher. There's also some bonuses, like you can play a straight that has a beta or an alpha symbol in the bottom left corner, as well as playing 20s and 21s to kind of counteract certain combos. And the person who wins the trick after everybody's either chosen to pass or play cards down to that same type or same uh, same uh, category, like triples, uh, that player is going to win and they're going to gather a location as well as a reward. Then that player will start off the new trick and you're going to go around doing that 13 times until all the rounds are done. Finally, the last after the 13th round, there's four two bonus cards. 
cards. The 14th bonus location is going to go to Felix, provided he has locations equal to or more than the rest of the allied players. And the last one is going to go with the team with the least amount of cards in hand. Generally speaking, Felix will get that first card, but it could go either way for that second one. However, there is ways to change that up. And of course, depending on the number of players' uh, identities, like so if there's four good guys and one bad guy, there's some different rule variants, such as you only need five locations to win as that one player. Nevertheless, that's the basic idea for how to play the game. You're going to be utilizing the cards in your hand to take as many tricks as possible and trying to figure out what your opponents are. All right, let's go down below and I'll show you a couple rounds of how to play. It's fairly simple, then I'll come up and tell you what I think about the game. So I went ahead and dealt out for a five player game in Weak Defeat Strong and everybody has their own unique identity hidden. Now it could be uh, either team, there's no way of knowing. Because they get shuffled up, Felix gets added, so then you shuffle more, then deal them out, flip over Felix and everybody else's are going to be hidden. And you could be on the good guy's team or of course you could be on his team. It's organized by orange and by green. And they have special abilities on those cards. You're also going to get a certain amount of cards based on the number of players. And I went ahead and organized each of these hands as well. I think there's 32 cards in each of their hands. It tells you in the rule book how many cards you start off with in the game depending on the number of players. I went ahead and set the identity next to the amount of cards the player's going to start with in their hand. And then I've set up 13 locations here in Manhattan along with the reward underneath them. You have the effect deck, and these are the same cards. I've just gone ahead and set them aside, so that way I can show you them after this. And then I have the extra cards in the fire deck, which also will be shuffled up. And finally, the two bonus locations that you'll be getting at the end of the game, provided you meet certain conditions. So at the beginning of the game, Felix is going to get to go first, and he has his extra nine cards, which he gets to add to his hand, and then he gets to look through his hand, and he gets to play a trick. And he, has, of course, has different wild cards, which he can use, as well as uh, some strength cards and whatnot. But we're just going to start start off with something fairly easy so you get an idea of how it works. So for instance, Felix can go ahead and play four sixes. Four sixes is the current trick and the next player in this order will just go along. It's going to have the option to either play against the trick or pass. Now this player here is a good guy so it's likely he's going to want to go up against Felix because he's not on Felix's team. So he's going to look to see if he can beat four sixes uh, and he has three eights. He's got four five nines. He's got three tens. He's got four uh, four elevens. So actually four elevens is probably a good one to play. So he'll play four elevens which beats out Felix's uh, four sixes. The next player will have a chance to play, and he's a bad guy. Now the question is, uh, the bad guy's gonna say, okay, do, does this player actually wanna beat this guy's hand because he's against him? Or is he trying to up the hand to guarantee that the bad guys get the location? And there's not no way of knowing at the beginning of the game. So he could choose to pass if he wants to, fig if he wants to try and uh, save his cards for later, or if he's really worried, he can try and go against that player. He does not have enough. He only has three 13s and he doesn't have any wild so he'd have to pass either way because he doesn't have enough to beat the trick. But if he did he could have the option of choosing to pass or to uh, fight against it. This player here is another bad guy uh, and he's probably going to try and beat that trick. Maybe he's going to assume uh, that it's probably a good idea to. Now can he? He's got three 13s. He does have 20s and 21s Ooh, he wants to save those though, so I think he's gonna pass as well. And then finally the last player is a good guy, and the good guy says, okay, well maybe he beat him and he's actually a good guy, so it's probably a good idea for me to pass. It's hard to choose, you have 13 rounds, and you gotta make sure you do what's right, so he's gonna probably pass. And in which case, these cards are all going to go, and the player who won the trick is going to be the one who uh, who wins the round. And so in this case, you're going to have Davis over here. He's going to win the round. He chooses any of these locations. He gathers that location, and it's one of his locations for the end of the game for his team. And then in addition, he gets to flip over the reward and get to, gets to do whatever it is. Draw one effect card from the effect deck. He draws that, and he can use that when he wants. This is a wild card, and it can be used as an any number card other than a 20 or 21 or an alpha card. He puts that into his hand. And then he's going to start the trick off next. And remember, when you start off a trick, you can start it off as either uh, doubles, triples, quadruples, as well as you could do, if you wanted, straights of three, but only if they have the beta numbers or alpha, alpha symbols on the side. So this is a beta two. If he has a beta three, and if he has a beta four, he can play that down. Beta suits are going to beat uh, any number of cards, two, three, four, five, six. 
Uh, the only difference is there's some special rules with 20 and 21. Uh, but in general, betas and alphas are going to beat those, and they're usually going to be smaller in numbers in general. Other thing to, to notice is on a card, they have number symbols. And at the beginning of a round, if you have five number symbols in your hand on cards, you can choose to discard those and gain a location from the pool over here. But it can kind of disrupt your hand as well. And you're going to start with this player and continue going. And the, the, it's going to work the same way for everything. You're just basically playing a trip taking game, going back and forth. Uh, gaining new locations and flipping over the rewards, uh, drawing a card effect from the card effect pile. Sometimes these rewards will let you see what other players' identities are. And finally, at the end of the round, after everybody has gathered these, there's two victory conditions left. The first one is, uh, A, does, did Felix uh, meet or uh, is greater than the number of locations as any of the good guys? So if he had three locations and this is a good guy and he had two and this is a little good guy and he had three, he would meet that credential, he would gain another location. And then the final bonus condition is, uh, which team team has the lowest amount of cards in their hands total, that team is going to gain that bonus location. Add up the amount of locations, and that is going to be the team that wins whoever has the most. If it's a four on one, so let's say it was Felix by himself against the other enemy team, if Felix had five locations at the end of the game, he would win. However, if the other team had... Um, if the other team had uh, taken control over more than he can gain five, then they would win. Obviously, he has to have at least five, so that there are certain conditions uh, depending on the number of players because the identities are random. So you're going to get those four and ones on the occasion, but not too likely. So that's the idea of the game. Let's talk about some effect cards. This is a control card. It forces a player to skip their next turn for the round. So basically, stop, skip one of your tricks. Uh, if more than three players play a card this round and you win, you get to draw an additional effect card from the pile, so that can be useful. Uh, this is a wild card that counts as an alpha or a beta, which is nice because it beats out normal cards. This is a wild card that counts as any number except for alphas, betas, 20s, and 21s. Money card that you can go ahead and utilize to discard as one of the five in order to gain a location. Uh, seduction cards, if you're uh, a female player, you're going to be able to mess with male players in certain ways. Uh, sudden strikes, this is any number of cards that you play, so if you play three three all those cards get plus three, making them all sixes. But you have, and this is a good one because it's any number. This says when you play two cards, you get a plus five on them. So if you play two sevens, they, they turn into thirteens. And this is if you play one card, it'll get plus three as well. And no card can over exceed twenty or twenty one. And twenty or twenty one is always going to beat out any number of pluses on any other number of cards. And that's the basic idea of the game. Weak, def weak defeat strong. There's a couple different variations as well, but I think you get the idea of it. Let's come up and talk about the game, and I'll tell you what I think. All right, so weak defeat strong, and what do I think of the game? Well, instead of using my doing my normal caveats, I'll skip for that towards the end. We'll just talk about the game in general. The first thing I want to say is it's a trick-taking game, obviously, with hidden teams, which is interesting. It's very unique. I haven't seen a game that does this before. I like hidden team games, so there may be a bias in that in that side of things as far as me enjoying those kind of like deduction-based thinky games. And the fact that this game does have that included with another one of my favorite uh, genres, which is trick-taking, is, is a bonus or a plus. Uh, basically, what's cool about this game is you're going to determine who's on your team based on how they play, when they choose to pass, and if they choose to pass in general. Sometimes you're going to want to help your teammates out. You know that they're on your team, but they played low, so you want to try and boost them up. And then that might make them think that you're actually not on their team. So there is this back and forth going through. When you're playing a 4v1, you're not actually sure that everybody's on your team except for that one guy, which is pretty interesting And when that when that does happen. It's, it's, it's not very common, but when it does happen, people are playing against each other to a certain extent. They're only guaranteed that you know somebody's on your team is when you draw a reward card and that reward specifically says to look at one of your opponent's hidden identity cards. There's abilities on your cards that let you do certain things, which is kind of cool as well. Um, but overall, it's a cool little game. It's a definitely an interesting and unique style uh, uh, as to the hidden roles, meeting with the trick-taking styles. Uh, overall, I had a lot of fun with this game. Now, let's talk about the caveats of the game, or my critiques, I should say. Uh, amount of cards in hand. 32 cards in a four or five player game, a five player game, that's a lot of cards to have in your hand and you're, you're, you have to sit there and organize them a bit to begin with, which can be kind of frustrating. But once you've gotten that done, you're not gonna be drawing that many cards throughout the game. So it's just one big organization of 32 cards and then you're set. It reminds me of the game 13, but with 32 cards that you have to organize. Uh, rules clarifications. There's certain rules that need clarifying um, that 
I, they seem kind of intuitive, but I like to make sure when I'm playing it correctly that there are certain things I need to do. Um, first of all, the first th uh, three rounds from watching another video along with watching reading the rules, because it didn't say in the rules, but it did say in the, the video, the first three rounds you can only play numbers one through six, and that kind of makes sense. I played it both ways, and I like the way when you're playing one through six at the beginning because that gets rid of those smaller cards. Um, the ability clarifications, because... When you're playing uh, abilities, certain players have different abilities they can do, like Davis here has last shot, he can play any number of cards after skipping his initial turn in the round. Once per game, identity declaration is not needed, so you don't need to reveal your identity. Uh, I like that aspect, but how do you know if that's the only one time you can use it? Is it just a simple amount of certain uh, abilities that you can use throughout the game? Uh, I think it would need a player reference card for sure. It also would be nice for a player reference card as far as understanding how to play a number of cards. Now, I have assumed based on everything I've seen that you can only play three twos or four fives or one five. Uh, you can't simply play a three seven two uh, four, right? Uh, but it doesn't say in the rules that you can't. I'm gonna imagine that that's just not the case though, but it doesn't say, so that would be a nice clarification. Um, uh, strike and strength cards. Uh, it's some, one of them says like plus one to one card, one says plus three to three cards, one says plus five to all cards. Uh, that works. Uh, so I'm guessing it's when you play one card, it's the only time you can play that plus one, plus three to f one card. Uh, but why couldn't you play plus plus one to the, you know one of the cards in your set of three? That would be more clarification. Although realistically, it makes sense that when you, it, it's going to benefit you to give you more higher bonuses when you play one or two cards. So it, you know, there's just little things. The last final thing, which is a super small critique, right, is is the fonts on the box. There's like a million of them. Go ahead and choose just a couple. I think that would benefit you. Overall, the artwork's nice and. Um, I, I know it, it sounds like I'm going hard at this game, but I'm not really. There's just definitely clarifications needed in the rules, but we were able to play fully and it functioned just fine. Um, I just think that to get me right above that tape point where I'm like, I really am into this game, I just need to get those those clarifications. So I think once the Kickstarter pops out and you see all the different rules and how it, 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 I'm, I'm sure they'll give you some kind of rundown of all the rules and whatnot, uh, then that'll help. I'm imagining how I've explained it is the correct way to play, and if that's the case, I really, really did enjoy this game. I had a lot of fun playing it. I like those hidden team-based mechanics. I think you will like this as well. If you like trick-taking games attached to it, uh, there's sometimes you're going to not get the cards you want in your hand, but that's okay because it's going to have those uh, alpha and beta straights, which is going to be nice. So when you get bunches of ones and twos and threes, you can still play those straights and those are going to give you almost instant wins. They're not guaranteed, but it's pretty dang close. And of course, 20s and 21s as well have that strong functionality. I liked the effect cards. Ferdinand wasn't a big fan of them apparently, but I really, really enjoyed these things. There wasn't any of them that really like, I was like, oh, it's too overpowered or not strong enough. It was nice to get a little bonus when I was gathering the locations. And it's also nice that they added clarifications for 4v1 as opposed to just making it so every single player in a four player game, there must be two and two and there must be in a five player game, so on and so forth. They did change that, which is nice as well. Overall, Weak Defeat Strong is a pretty cool little game. I enjoy the style of it. And I think it's definitely unique. It's a unique and interesting take on a trick taking game, along with one of my favorite aspects of the game, which is hidden identities or hidden teams, right? So go ahead and check out down below on Kickstarter if this sounds like an interesting game for you, uh, and let's get the outro. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. If you like this video, go and check the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as taking a look at We Defeat Strong! The hidden role slash trick-taking game. Definitely worth taking a look at, especially if you like those things. Uh, also, go ahead and check out my website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, kicks, or listen more. We are giving away three games right now. Uh, Vindication, which is a monstrous, one of my top five games of the year. It's up on my website, uh, unfilteredgamer.com. With the giveaway, you click on the link, you'll find it. As well as Season 2 for Show Me How to Win. They're giving away a game called Feudum. And I think there's one or two more other giveaways, pardon my memory, but go ahead and check those out on the site. You can win the games and I will ship them right to you. No shipping necessary, pretty cool. As well as check out my friends at everythingboardgames.com and The Giveaway Geek. Great sites, great giveaways, even more than my own site. All right guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to beating you as the weak one when you're the strong one next time.